Hey, welcome back to our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia. My name's Larry. I've been commissioned to restore this antique Singer sewing machine cabinet and cast iron base. I thought you might want to come along for the ride. Let's go. And just like many of these machines that we see, this one's suffering from, you know, the typical issues with the veneer which both comes loose and pretty much just disintegrates. And then as we open the top, you can see the veneer that is inside the machine, inside the machine cabinet, has, has come loose, it's missing, and there's quite a sizable dent right here. As far as the drawers, they're in pretty good shape. They just need to be refinished. The center drawer is in good shape. It too needs to be refinished. And the issue of, with the base, and I haven't taken it apart yet to make sure that there's no pieces broken or missing, is just that the, you know, the paint is gone and it's, it's, it's all rusted. So what we'll do is we will take, completely disassemble the machine, We'll work on the base first because I'm going to have to order new veneer. I spoke with the owner and we've decided to replace all the veneer on this machine rather than try to patch in spots. Uh, that way everything has a uniform look when it's done. So let me get uh, some tools. We'll get this top off and we'll flip it up on top of the workbench and disassemble the base. And obviously to get the lid off all we have to do is unscrew these screws. Remember, in this lid assembly, the screws are different sizes. You don't want to mix them up or you'll be punching a screw through your new work when you reassemble the machine. And on this second hinge, you can see it's bent up, so we'll have to repair that. And again, not to beat a dead horse, but as a reminder, these are the, are the screws that come out of these lid hinges. The ones that come out of the machine side are very much longer than the ones that come out of the hinge side. If you mix them up during reassembly and run this screw on the lid side, you will poke through your lid and have to do your work all over again. So remember, the long ones go on the inside. I'm going to pull these off and we'll get this flipped over. And here's the hinge that we took off, and if you can see, it's bent. So I'm just going to put this in the vise and bend it back straight. That'll do. And with our old girl upside down, you can see our first issue is that this drawer case, obviously it's not only loose in its mounting, it's completely loose and needs to be reassembled. Let's check the other one. Yeah, pretty much the same issue with this one as well. The front part of the cradle looks to be in pretty good shape. We have a couple of pieces of missing veneer here that we can take care of. The back of the cradle has some issues. Let's flip the table around and take a look at that. If you're looking at the back of the cradle now, you can see we have delamination of the plywood. We have some missing substrate in the plywood. That's not all that unusual and we'll be able to repair that with some careful work. Looking down, this piece of wood here is what the back of the cradle is supposed to nail into and it is broken away and if you look here on the left side we have this much space 
and as we traverse you can see that this underlying piece of wood that it nails to has broken away and come in this direction so we're going to have to take that apart and identify why that has moved try to get it back where it belongs repair all of this plywood and then reattach it so this will be a little bit challenging and the back portion of the uh, the cradle case, I guess we'll call it, is in pretty good shape. And here are the wheels. These are all riveted in from the factory, as you can see. We have this wheel with a broken rivet. This wheel here has been reattached with a, I, I'm not even sure what kind of a screw or bolt that is, uh, but at least we still have the wheel. And this one has its original rivets. So we're gonna have to remount uh, two of those wheels. That's not any big deal. The drawer cases are held on with four screws that go through the top rail of the drawer case and into the tabletop. They're the first things that come off. And in addition to the four screws, we have this little hook. It hooks into this part of the cast iron frame and it keeps the drawer from doing this. So this just comes out with two screws and And with the uh, drawer assemblies that are removed, the next step obviously is to remove the cast iron base assembly. It's only held on with four screws, two on each side. And interestingly on this side, I've pulled this screw out. Perhaps you can see the original screw, screw hole is here. This had been mounted in about a quarter of an inch closer to the uh, cradle assembly. Apparently this was removed at one time. Perhaps this original screw hole is stripped. And if I, would, if I measure the distance from there to the edge, I get about seven and a half inches. And if I measure it over here, it's seven and a quarter. And it's seven and a quarter on the other side as well. So it looks like at least one time in this machine's history, this cast iron base has probably been removed. All right, let me get these four screws out and we will move forward. And here's our cast iron base all ready for disassembly. The cradle assembly is held on with these four L brackets. There's two screws in here and one in there. Let me get these off and we'll pull the cradle up. And what remains on the, uh, the table right now is this spring assembly which supports the, me the mechanism that lowers the machine and raises the machine. And then these screws here hold on this trim piece here and this trim piece here. So let's get those off and we'll be done disassembling the, the cabinet. There are seven screws that hold that face frame assembly, the two piece face frame assembly on. And what I do to prevent confusion when I go to put this back together and it's been re-veneered and I don't know what holes I'm supposed to drill through my veneer so this mounts, I mark these with a uh, basically just a little ding. So by each of the screws that hold on a face frame assembly piece, there'll be a small little ding. And that way I'll know where to drill my holes when the time comes. And this little piece here is a guide for the slide-in drawer. Some of the models had a flip-down drawer and some had a, a slide drawer. This one has a slide drawer. I don't know what years are associated with what style. Well, that's just a simple rabbited piece of wood that guides the drawer slides and goes right there. And there we go. I have to unhinge this here.
And the final bits of hardware that have to be removed are these assemblies here. What these are are the actual uh, pieces that the machine mounts to and it hinges to allow the machine to drop down when it's folded up. These just come out with two screws apiece and we're all done. And there's what those two little hinge assemblies look like removed from the cabin frame. And this is the fully disassembled cabinet. Pretty much all the wood parts that are going to have to be all repaired, re-veneered, and refinished. And in these bags is all the hardware that I pulled off of the machine, including that spring assembly. Every single piece of that will get cleaned, wire brushed, lubricated if it needs lubrication, painted if it needs to be painted before reinstalling it. So, oh yeah, I've got the, uh, the cradle assembly over here on another table. That's got to be fixed too. Okay, it's time to disassemble this base. It's basically modular, very much like the cabinet was. These two side pieces are bolted on. This is a very early machine. It actually has a wooden pitman arm. I think the owner told me this was from 1905. Uh, in later machines there's different hardware that mounts these but it, it's all the same. So what we've got to do is get these four nuts off and that will allow us to take these side pieces out and then the treadle assembly frame will come loose. It's basically this I call it an X brace. It's the part that says Singer. And attached to it is this foot plate, which pivots on these two pins here. The back of the foot plate is attached to the pitman arm, which drives the flywheel. This piece here comes off with a single bolt. This is called the dress guard. This would keep ladies from tangling their long dresses in the flywheel when they work. There's also another piece here that guides the belt that drives the machine. So what I'm going to do is just start taking this apart uh, piece by piece. If you are doing this and it's your first time, take lots of pictures, take notes, pay attention so you remember where things go back together. But this really, it may look very, very complicated. It's not that hard to take it apart. Uh, before lunch, I just came back from lunch by the way, before lunch I sprayed all these fasteners with the PB Blaster, which is a releasing agent, which if they are rusted closed, should give us some help. So here we go. And that's a 5 8 nut there, by the way. I think I'm going to lay this flat. This is the treadle itself, the foot treadle, and it's held on with this nut here and it has a slotted screw in it. That screw is actually tapered and this allows you to adjust the tension on this treadle assembly. Now this is a three quarter inch nut and that acts as kind of a lock nut and then this is that is in there. But what this is, it's, it's, a, it's a threaded bolt with a tapered shaft at the end of it that goes into here and you can tighten this up. We've got to get this out of here so let me, uh, let me start wrestling with this. This is an impact driver. What it does is it turns as you hit it. Sometimes this will break them loose. If not, we're going to go to some heat. And that just broke.
Okay, fortunately we got it to turn. Unfortunately the head broke off of it. I have replacement for this so it's no big deal but it's one of those things that can happen when you're working on old stuff. And one of those I wish I had it back moments. I should have heated this first. I got cocky because I felt it start to go when I was using the screwdriver. So I felt that with a tap I would have it. But with a tap I want to break in it. And here's the one we broke. And here's the replacement that I happen to have in stock. If you break one of these, you know, go to eBay and search and see if anybody's got any for sale. In this case, had I not had one and had I not been able to get a replacement, I just would have ground off the broken piece here and then taken a Dremel with a cutoff wheel and cut another groove in it. And there have been plenty of threads to use that. But this one, fortunately, we're not going to have to use. We happen to have one in stock, so let's move forward. Okay, we're looking now at the very bottom end of the wooden pitman arm. There's a little set screw in here that maintains the tension of the pitman arm on the pivot arm. And I'm very carefully backing this out to loosen up that fitting. If this screw was rusted or rotten, you'd want to be extremely careful. There, I think that's fine for right now for what we need to do. The next step that we have to do is drive the pin out. So for that, I'm going to flip this back upside down. We'll try to drive out that pin. Okay, I hope you can see this pin right here. It actually goes through this shaft, and it's got to go back out in this direction. This thing has been in here for 115 years, and it really doesn't care very much about some fat guy from Georgia. But I've been very gently tapping it with this nail set that happens to fit it perfectly and I've got it to move. So I'm going to swing you around to the other side, see if I can tap and pull this pin out. Remember, this pitman arm is wood. We can't use heat on this. Okay, here we go. We got it. That's a 115 year old taper pin and we got it out. Whew. Lucky. Okay, back to our regularly scheduled disassembly. Next off is the dress guard. Okay, next off is this belt guard. I've loosened the bolt, it's a screw head. That's off. And the last thing is the flywheel assembly. And there's a three-quarter inch nut underneath it that we're going to back off. Okay, that nut has to come down. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's all sorts of fabric and other detritus wrapped around those threads. So I'm going to clean them off. That ought to do it. I think we got to get that nut off completely in order to lift this up out of here.
And there's our prize, our flywheel assembly and the original wooden pitman arm. Pretty cool. And I'm just going to put these back just like that for now so I don't lose them. And here's the base completely disassembled. You've got that cross piece, the two legs, the treadle plate, the dress cover, I'm sorry, the dress guard, the flywheel and pitman arm assembly. Hey, good morning, it's the next day. Decided I'm going to uh, wire brush off the paint on all the cast iron, and then we'll get the cast iron painted and reassembled. We are gonna have a, a fairly lengthy waiting time to get a hold of the veneer that we need. I haven't even been able to get it ordered yet. We've got the holidays coming up today's December 20th, 2019, and some of those mills are closing down for a week, so we'll have to, uh, we'll have to be patient. But anyways, what we're going to do is I have a wire, a braided wire brush cup on my grinder and we'll use that to take the paint off. If you have access to a blast cabinet, that's the way to go. But I don't, so I elect to use the, uh, the wire wheel. So it's a very cold, rainy day out today. I'm going to be ducking back in and out of the shop. But I'll get you out there, show you a little bit of what I'm doing, and then I'll get to it. So stay with us. Okay, ready to go. Dust mask, face shield, unless you want to lose your sight, I wouldn't leave this behind. And here's what it looks like after we've got all the paint, most of the rust ground off of it. We've also got a, a crack in the cast iron right here that we're going to have to take care of as well. Well that's it, all the cast iron has been wire wheeled off. I used both a cup, uh, braided cup wire wheel and a braided, I don't know what you call it, the flat one. Uh, to get into all the nooks and crannies. came out uh, very well. I'm happy with it. In some places the paint was thick and very hard. In some places the paint was effectively gone. There was a lot of rust in the lower portions of the machine. But it's all been wire brushed or wire wheeled off. It's all clean cast iron now. So we'll get that cleaned up by the next time we're back in the shop and we'll get it, uh, we'll get it painted. Thanks for hanging out today. We'll see you tomorrow. Well, good morning. Welcome back for day three of the restoration of this Sanger sawing machine. I got an early start this morning, and I got that broken piece of the base welded up. Uh, I didn't show that to you. I'm not, a, I'm not an experienced welder, so there's no reason to see me take care of that. I know there'll be comments that say, you can't weld cast iron. Well, we do, and we did, and it's been fine on at least two other projects just like this. This particular crack was really uh, very stable. It wasn't like there was any movement in the pieces, so we just welded it up and ground off the weld and, and all is well. I've also been taking some time to clean the hardware that's associated with the base, and I'll show you how I do that next. And then, yeah, then I think we're ready to paint. So, here we go. And here's how that uh, weld came out. I'm pretty happy with it. That shouldn't be any problem for us from this point forward. And here's just one of the fasteners that's involved in the base. This one, I believe, attaches the cross piece to the, to the legs. You can see they're black. They've got a lot of dried grease on them, some rust. They're pretty filthy. So let me show you how I, uh, I clean these off. This is just a wire brush on my grinder. Really just takes a second. you can see the difference. Let me get the bolt on and then I'll show you how they look. Like. And that didn't take any more than a minute. You can see how nice and clean that is now. And uh, these will get painted when the time comes. 
Okay, all the cast iron pieces have been prepared for paint. They've been wiped down with acetone. I've got them up on some blocks here. The big issue is it's pouring rain outside and it's supposed to rain for the next couple of days. So I want to get some paint on these because I don't want them to flash rust on me. So what we're going to do is, sh is open the garage door. I'll shoot the paint actually just inside the shop here. The paint will blow out this way and then we'll drag it back inside, turn on the heat, let it dry, flip them over and do it again. I'm using Rust-Oleum Ultra Cover uh, Semi-Gloss Black. Okay, let's give it a whirl. First coat's on, let's let the heater do its thing. Get back in here and shoot a second coat, flip it over and continue. So far so good. We gave this first light coat on this one side about four hours to dry and it has with the heater running in the shop. So what we're going to do now is flip this over and get a coat, a light coat on the back and then our piece, pieces will be protected from rusting and then we can get back in here and get the final coats on them when the weather is a little bit more amenable since we are under both a flood watch and a high wind warning right now I don't think we're going to be shooting any paint outside Well that's going to wrap up day three. It's a good one. We got everything prepped, welded, painted, bang. We got to put another coat of paint on the uh, cast iron base and then we'll give it a couple of days to harden up and we'll reassemble it and set it aside, get to work on the wood. Thanks for sticking with us. We'll bring you back tomorrow when we get back to work on this project. And this is the spring assembly that uh, assists the machine up and down in the cabinet. If you can remember, it was uh, very, very rusty. All I did was take the pieces apart and soak them in vinegar, household vinegar, for 24, 36 hours and then uh, brush them off with some Scotch-Brite and rinse them in water and they are ready to be painted. So that came out really well. Hey, good morning. Welcome back. Let's put the base back together. Hey, I've got, uh, I think, three other videos up on the channel where I go into detail into assembling the base. I went into pretty good detail in disassembling it, so I'm not going to make this an instructional segment on how to assemble these bases. If you have a question, you can go check out one of the other videos or even look at this video in the beginning where I take it apart and just kind of figure it out from there going backwards. So right now it's time to throw this base back together and get moving on with this project. Here we go. Here's one of the bolts that we just put on. What I like to do is just take a little bit of grease and just touch a little bit of grease to the threads before I screw these down, you screw these nuts down. It's just going to help it come apart a little bit easier for the next guy.
Well, that'll do it for part one. Base is all back together. She works just fine, so we'll set her aside. We're going to keep going. The next video will be the repairs that we have to do, and there's quite a few. And then uh, we'll probably do a video on veneering or maybe run that into the repair video, depending on how long it goes. And then we'll do a separate video on the refinishing process. So that's how we do it. Base of a Singer sewing machine, just like new. Thanks for watching from our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia. Best regards. Thanks for watching. Take good care and remember it's just cast iron paint. I guess it's just cast iron and paint. Stay tuned for part two. Thanks, bye.